But my name is Michael Daverin and uh, my family have been farming here since the 14th century. I don't ever remember a time when we didn't farm, have winterage farming. It was, it was as natural as breathing. The practice of winterage means putting the cattle out onto the rocky areas of the winter where they have what we call as farmers a dry lie and that means somewhere dry and warm for them to lie. The rock absorbs the heat and it's, it, it, it's much warmer than the, the Greenlands. And uh, in the winter we get a lot of rain in the west of Ireland and here in the Burnham we get our two and a half metres or whatever it is and there is always, there, by and large, there is water in, in, up here in the winter months that wouldn't be available in the summer months. My name is Aoife Ford, I am 23 years old and I'm farming here in the heart of the Burn in County Clare. I farm alongside my father PJ and my mother Fiona. When I went to college I studied agricultural science and I started talking to my friends and they thought this was absolutely bonkers to be doing this to put your cows out up onto the hills for winter, the winter months. That They thought we were mad. And then I suppose the more I thought about it I realised how unique it was. But I suppose this is something that has happened in the Burn for thousands of years. We have always done it on our farm at home for as long as I can remember. I can remember being very small and remember following the cows up to the winter. It was always a big day because you had to obviously walk the cows a few miles or what have you. And I suppose um, like this has been done for generations and upon generations in, in my family and in the burn itself. And it's so important that we do this um, because um, it, 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 it ensures that the landscape, that we can, we can protect the landscape and we can continue to allow it to uh, develop further. The thing that will happen is when you don't graze out the winter you get rank grasses which creates an ideal uh, bed of litter for the hazelnuts to root, take root and grow scrub and the scrub will take over, come out, block the light and as soon as it blocks out the light everything beneath it dies and apart from mosses and, and lichens which have their own place in society but we don't, all of the rest of the floor of the barn will disappear. My name is John Mernon. I'm a farmer here in the Burn, a fifth generation farmer. We had a walk here one day, a group were out on a walk and I was ahead of two farmers and I heard them saying, how in the world does any cattle live here in this place? And I remember I had, um, had, had 14 or 15, a year and a half bullocks on the Wintridge at the time and they got a real good look at them and, and they were in good condition. and. Yeah, these vintages are, you have to be brought up with them to understand them. Lots, lots of people try different things, but really the suckler cow is the one that is best able to adapt it to these vintages. They are the real, they're the ones that, they're the whole reason why we have good quality vintages. Encroachment of scrub is a big problem here. As Dr. Sharon Pearce says, it's like the porridge overflowing the whole time. It's continuously creeping out onto the the species rich grassland they have to travel a lot more to fill themselves but you, you, you know it's it, it's completely different to, than summerland absolutely completely different because you can do lots of things with summerland you can drive a tractor on them but the cattle that are born and reared here are best able to manage these winterages cows are healthy very very healthy they're clean they're it's just heaven for them like i remember when i was going to school People used to laugh at us, like calling us cavemen and living on the rock and all this kind of thing. And you'd be, you'd almost be embarrassed to say you were from the burn. But for the last, for the last 10, 15 years, the burn program has turned that all around. In the 70s, we, were, we had subsistence farming. Then we joined the EU and um, the EU was only 70% sufficient in food. So there was a big push to get up to 100%. So we, the farmers of Ireland and in the Bourne here, the bulldozers rolled and we were even grant aided to make fields bigger in the green lush pastures and produce more cattle. And the idea was forget about the rank grasses in the, in the winterage, go to the more production, productive lands. And that's what we did. And we were the, 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 there was literally land abandonment in the early 90s because the idea was build a slatted house, feed silage to your cattle, more cattle and uh, you earn more money. Uh, 
it's special areas of conservation came in. They uh, it froze the the the, the, the winterages in time, and we couldn't cut a scrub. We couldn't. Uh, put in a track where we, we could literally couldn't hang a gate, we could actually do nothing. And it was the burn life came up with the idea that it was up to the farmer to decide what he had to do and what his job was to make to graze out the winter just properly, cut the scrub, treat it, and in order to do that we needed a trackway to get into the remote parts of the farm. Uh, when we got in there we had to put back the old stone walls that the herdsmen used to maintain for literally for what was called um, uh, freedom, where they got the a place that they could feed a few cattle on the, on the farm in return for the work that they did. Uh, that was long gone and the, the modern way was to put a trackway in so that you could get up very quickly up to where you wanted to be, keep the cattle up there. You could now create um, a, a rain catcher or, or trap a spring or whatever was needed to get water so that you could feed the burn ration to the pregnant cow for the latter stages of our, our pregnancy so she would deliver a healthy calf. And those are the things that made it viable to do what we're doing in the in, in, in burn life. And of course we get remunerated for producing this new product as we call it, species rich grasses, which is literally a new product. But we, we I can't produce the grasses. The cattle have to graze it off the rank grasses for me. But of course I, the farmer, am needed to manage the cattle. It's quite easy um, and it's quite hard to, to farm the landscape. It's it's easy when you come up and you find them and you find them handy and they're 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 all very content with each other. But then there's days and there's storms blowing and there's gale force winds and it's dark. And instead of going to a static shed and turning on a light, you have to go up and you have to find and herd the cattle on the, on the winterage. So I suppose it can be very, very challenging at times, but it's also, it's very rewarding at the same time. As you get into late April, we'll have all of our animals down and then that's when the winter becomes spectacular as the flowers begin to bloom and they begin to bloom because of all the hard work that the cows have done during the winter time they haven't grazed in the landscape and I suppose it's very very important as a farmer in the burn that we protect the landscape we make sure that it's grazed correctly it's not undergrazed it's not overgrazed and that that we can we can really in, enhance enhance the la landscape and give the fantastic flora in the burn the chance to bloom. Farming has changed hugely over the last hundred thousand years massively but this, this what we do here in the burn, it hasn't changed and it's, it's something that it continues on from generation to generation. If you were here a hundred years ago, this is, this is what would have happened. Cattle would have been going to the hills for the winter time. So I think I'm very, very lucky to be able to actually farm this landscape and to actually have the privilege and the understanding of it and to be able to, 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 to look around and to be so in, in, engrossed in culture, it, it's wonderful. I believe it, it, we all have a role to play and, and uh, we as farmers are at the cold face maybe but we need the support of society and it's wonderful to see society rowing in behind us and I would say become a member of the Burn Bureau Trust if you're a viewer if you're not already one because that support that speaks louder than words that says you want the burn to be preserved for many generations to come and why wouldn't you it's our it's our children and our children's children we're doing it for.